first publication on OCT in the journal Science in November 1991 came after a 10-year collaboration between my laboratory and that of Professor Jim Fujimoto. We were looking at short pulse laser effects in the eye and came to use short pulse lasers to measure ocular structures. Uh, the problem was that femtosecond lasers are very expensive and complex technology, uh, but we were very fortunate to work with Eric Swanson, who is at MIT Lincoln Labs, and Eric is an expert on optical communications, and he found uh, methods that really could do these measurements in a compact and low-cost way. So I wasn't getting paid, and, and uh, this wasn't getting funding. It, I had a lot of expertise and infrastructure, and and I began working nights and weekends because it was enjoyable and exciting to advance this new field and collaborate with this, this group of people. OCT is a case study in the power of collaboration between engineering and medicine in the development of new technologies that can dramatically improve patient care. I think nowadays this type of approach, uh, which is focusing on translation and multidisciplinary teams, uh, is, is much more common. But you have to remember that 20 years ago in the 1990s, this was a very new uh, sort of uh, method. When Jim Fujimoto and I began working together in 1981, we never imagined that the result of our collaboration would be OCT. The person that actually uh, conceived of the concept for OCT was David Huang. Uh, he was an MD, PhD student here, and he had the idea of combining axial measurements to construct a cross-sectional image. So this was really uh, the first uh, idea and uh, demonstration for optical coherence tomography. We realized that o OCT was too slow, uh, and the, uh, the solution was we thought of get rid of any moving part by using a laser light source that could be tuned very rapidly. You know, scientifically, very little was known about how far light could penetrate inside turbid tissue and still maintain high resolution imaging information. What was the maximum amount of power that could be transmitted into the eye and other tissues? I think Eric Swanson really uh, led the development of uh, the technology really to be able to put it in the clinic and uh, the technology transferred later to uh, Carl Zeiss who commercialized this. Uh, we were also fortunate to work with Carmen Pugliafito and Joel Schumann who led the clinical studies and I think the clinical validation. First we had to invent the machine and develop it to a point where we could use it in people and then we had to come up with ways where we were going to be able to measure the things that we were interested in measuring. How are we going to measure these tissues that were relevant to the diseases of the eye? I realized that the wavelength of this OCDR was one where we could get to the back of the eye. We could measure the retina with this. I went over to uh, MIT and brought over a bag of calf eyes and we sectioned the calf eyes at the equator, put it under the beam, and when we came back there indeed was a spike from the retina. These contributions in the technologies surrounding OCT have resulted in paradigm shifts in both the diagnosis and care of patients. OCT has revolutionized the treatment of eye disease on a global basis, and it is now routinely used to make clinical decisions about treating patients with blinding diseases such as macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, and glaucoma. It's every aspect of ocular disease, anterior segment, posterior segment, that's been revolutionized by OCT. And moving forward, the future looks even brighter with swept source OCT and functional OCT. I think we can look forward to continuing advances in the technology. OCT will be on an integrated optics chip uh, in 10 years, and it will be much faster and very compact. And you can imagine a, a handheld OCT system as small and, and lightweight and flexible as today's ophthalmoscope. So the future looks very bright.